to The Porch. I'm Lindsay Bocardo, keynote speaker and virtual presenter for organizations who want to build strong, heart-centered, multi-generational teams. I personally believe that the modern day leader has a moral obligation to grow and lead others from a grounded and healthy and healed place. So you're going to hear me bring on all different types of leaders, psychologists, neuroscience experts, storytellers, our friends in the HR community, emotional intelligence researchers, anyone that can help us think about how we treat other people at work. This is where I bring my favorite thought leaders on to teach and mentor us. You know, the porch is here so that we can have a real human to human conversation. We don't call this the office or the stage. It's really a time for us to relax and enjoy each other. And today I have somebody on that I deeply respect. This is Trista Rux. HR director at Sounds True. If you haven't heard of Sounds True, honestly, you've probably read books published by Sounds True and you didn't even know it. As a multimedia publishing company, they have a mission to wake up the world. And they draw all different types of authors. You've probably heard of Wim Hof. He does breathing, uh, different types of breathing. He's got us all into cold ice baths. We've got this fantastic book, Wild Mercy, by uh, Moravia Star, fantastic book. I've got one of mine. We were talking about this earlier. If you've ever done Danielle Laporte, The Desire Map, we're talking about books that encourage you to go deeper into who you are and to wake up and to treat yourself and other people differently. So it's just so meta that I get to have Trista Rux on because we talk about, well, if we're going to be an organization that is waking up the world, we also have to think very consciously on the HR side about how we take care of our employees. So Trista, thank you so much for being here today. I am thrilled. I'm nerding out. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for having me. I love your show and I'm so honored to be a guest. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Okay, this is something that I know you and I've talked about before. This idea, obviously, of remote work. I'm in Indiana. You're in Colorado right now. And we've talked about, you know, how do we stay tuned into each other with remote work when we're spread all over the place? We're not checking in. We're not going to the, having a picnic together. We have to really work at staying connected remotely. How do you practice right now staying tuned in to yeah. your team? That's a, a great question. Uh, and, you know, I can say that prior to the pandemic, we were a... 95 percent in the office environment mm -hmm. so this change over the last two years has has been a big challenge um we have been throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks and uh it's been an ongoing struggle that we don't yeah. feel like we've completely solved um some of the ways that we stay tuned in though like when we first went remote um, shortly thereafter, we we uh, installed Slack and yeah. created um, channels that weren't work related, so people can go and like talk about their pets or talk about their lunch yeah. or um, you know. But we we tried a bunch of different things that didn't stick. Like we you know we're a, a mindfulness business uh, to some extent, uh, or that's like one of our topics. And so like we yeah. had. Uh, some people who are were trying to lead like, hey, let's gather every day at 10 o'clock for a 15 minute meditation, um, you know, and so you start strong and then people kind of trickle out and yeah. they're like, okay, let's try it with like coffee talk. And so um, we would start like this weekly or monthly thing where people could just join in and like you always get the big um, gathering at first and then people kind of trickle off. Yep. Um, but I would say like we still have all, all company meetings uh, yep. once a month. So we're connecting, we're getting updates from um, our CEO and our leadership team. Um, we, Tammy, our founder and CEO started something uh, of a newsletter that like in between all company meetings, there, there's a newsletter that goes out from time yeah. to time to keep us you know, informed of all the things that are happening. Uh, and then within teams, uh, each team might have a different structure. So some teams are, you know, getting together on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Uh, and some teams are like, man, I'm like Zoom fatigued. I, I don't want to get together for, you know, Another. game night after work, you know, but we, we tried that. Uh, and then like in the spirit of authenticity too, like we want to bring 
all of our full selves in, um, something we used to do in person, we used to have, we called it the Sounds True Salon, where we'd get together and people would bring all of their talents. It was kind of like a talent show. Uh, and so we've tried that, like, uh, I think it was last fall, um, we put on our first virtual talent show. So we continue to strive to do things that connect um, outside of just the, hey, here's the business that, th that needs to get done. Because of course there's the business that needs to get done. Right. Um, but, you know, are you reaching out to your coworkers or your peers uh, separately? Are you checking in and like, how was your weekend? How? So we're really encouraging people to not just have the work talks but yeah. call somebody and just, you know, shoot the breeze on, you know, what you would normally do at the water cooler if we were yep. in person, because yep. those are the bits that I think continue to be like what you're we're still striving for, like bringing that strong culture where, you know, but, but, but it's not, it's not fully there yet. And I think, I know. Yeah. I think we're all fooling ourselves if we think we've got it. Like, Isn't that I don't, rude? yeah. Don't you think it's interesting how we feel pressure to like we were talking about before everybody came on our beloved fur uh, creatures that live with us, our pets. And even like today, our pets have been disruptive. I found my dog chewing this dollar bill earlier today. Like, what are you first of all, where did this come from? How did you find it? And what inspired you to go? You know what? I'm going to put this in my mouth. That's what I found her doing in the middle of a training call. And I thought. Can everybody hold on one second? I'm going to remove some money from my rescue dog. You were sharing your cats are all up in your biz today. If you can hear them, she's gonna, they're, they're on and off. Like they're we, part of this. We've been gone for a few days. And so like one of our cats is very needy and has been trying to get into the office here this entire time. Yep. <laughs> this, in, this entire time. <laughs> but it is, it's like, I don't know why. And I would love to hear in the chat too what you think about this, but for some reason, when I'm on a Zoom, all of a sudden I feel like there can be a, not a single interruption. Nothing can do. And yet, when, if you and I were in the office, somebody might walk in. We might get up together and go get a coffee. It's not like you and I would be sitting at our office in Boulder saying, hello, Trista, pay full attention to me right now. This is our time. There is a mix of how we engage. Yeah, I, I think I've actually just was having this conversation with somebody maybe a week or so ago that I think that some of that Zoom fatigue is you have to be on and like, I'm paying attention, I'm paying attention. Yeah. Whereas in a meeting, you know, I I constantly have paper and pen, yes. I'm a little old school. I love but it. like in person meetings, I used to doodle or take notes. And like, you're not constantly having to create that eye contact. Yep. Um, and then there's that, that thing they say, like doodling kind of helps you remember the things. And yep. so like, we just interacted in our meetings differently. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, one of the things that we try to do at Sound Street, a lot of people don't turn their camera on um, and that's yep. cool. Or um, sometimes they'll like just turn their own view off so yep. they don't see themselves, right? Because then you're a little bit more natural. You can kind of like, you know, I hear something out the window, I look and turn and like, oh, oh, the garbage truck just went by or whatever. Yeah, that's like um, a normal thing to do. Mm -hmm. And yet we feel this pressure and some people are sharing that chat too. You feel so much pressure to self monitor and to stay focused. And that's not even how we would act And I read a book called, um, where is it? It's about connecting. Oh, can you hear me? And, uh, it's all about how, when we connect over zoom or over any virtual, it doesn't have to be the product zoom, but when we're connecting video audio, we lose those little moments together where uh, we look at something together or this is one of the reasons so many of us have eye strain is because you're sitting exactly the same distance all day where your natural eyes are made to oh look up over here look down at this paper look over here and continue to shift focus versus being locked at this spot so there's something energetic about being in person we actually know that that's not like a oh i think i suspect we know even biologically that our bodies behave different when we're mm -hmm. sitting together in a physical space. I think one thing I saw you do that was really inspiring was how you kick off every meeting when it is virtual. And it did create something different for me. Can you share a little bit about what how you kick off meetings? Sure. Uh, so 
most of our meetings uh, start with what we call a good minute. And so a good minute, I'll reach over. A lot of us who lead team meetings have a bell. Yeah. And so we literally ring the bell and sit quietly for about a minute uh, just to have a moment to like get centered for this meeting. Yeah. Let go whatever you had going on before. Like, hey, this is the meeting I'm about to attend. This is the good minute to kind of prepare. And I would say additionally, one thing you didn't get to experience is a lot of our meetings start with personal check-ins. So uh -huh. um, yeah. before we get to business, we literally go around the Zoom room and each Love person it. has an opportunity to kind of like share their state of mind, what they're feeling, uh, how they're doing that day, you know, it's your time to be like, I didn't sleep at all last night. So if I'm yawning, I promise I'm not bored. It's just, you know, I didn't sleep or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so that is another thing that we do to kick off a lot of our meetings. That sounds true is these personal check-ins to kind of like just get a gauge of where we are. Do you ever have somebody, um, kind of how do you make sure that people don't take up a, like eight minutes? Like, well, you know, actually I got this tooth. Can I really see like not getting really far into a story? Is there, do you contain that somehow? Or do you just so let people chat? We mostly let people chat. Yeah. And I would say different meetings have kind of different energy levels. Yeah. Um, and occasionally there's a time where somebody will come and they'll take up a five or seven minute thing because there's something really pressing for them. And when that happens, I often see like this vulnerability open the room like a blooming flower. Like all of a sudden you're able to um, extend somebody that um, benefit of the doubt or give them a bit of support and love yeah. Uh, and so usually when somebody does need to go for a little bit longer, it's an opportunity to really just connect with that person and it changes the energy of the room. Brilliant. So I just, what you just said, it tells me whatever somebody's going through is not an obstacle to productivity. It's part of the, you have found a way to say, if they go a little longer, it will actually be a benefit to all of us to really connect one layer deeper. I don't have to like make every single minute a way that I want it to be, but you are allowing that space. Well, I think if you don't allow for the building of relationship, especially in this work remote environment, um, like you're missing out like if your if your teams aren't treating your coworkers with that personal relationship building aspect you're not going to create a team of collaboration you're not going to have the camaraderie you're not going to feel safe you're not going to build that trust uh to be able to go and find that initiative to do this new thing and like you have yes. to build the relationship in order yes. to work well together. What an interesting perspective to create space for both. And, you know, we do think we are on a mission together. You're on a very clear mission. I think that's one of the things that sets sound true apart. You're waking up the world. Everything we do comes back to this work that we're doing across the globe. And each person matters in this moment, too. Yeah. It's a, it's a real, for all of us, the needs of the mission that we're on, the company that we're with, and our personal needs. Something that you and I have explored, um, and we've done some training around authentic communication, which is this idea of first I have to be self-aware and what's going on with me. Then I have to learn how to communicate that clearly to other people and also give and receive feedback along the way. And I'm just so curious, you know, sometimes there's this tension similarly between authenticity and professionalism. Totally. How do you strike the balance of the two or how do you think about those two concepts? Are they in competition with each other? Are they on a teeter totter? How do these two work together practically in your mind? 
So in my mind, now I also, I'm coming to your show here as somebody who's been with a company trying to create um, a spirit of authenticity. You know, I, I've been, it sounds true for 23 years. At this point, I don't know how to be somebody other than who I am. Yeah. Um, and so I have a different view maybe. Like in my mind, if you aren't actively trying to foster a community of authenticity, I mean, at the basic level, that means what? Like people feel safe being who they are. Yeah. That's like the very basic level, right? Um, but when you dig deeper into that, it's like if you can share your passions and your quirks and your hobbies and your ideas and your vulnerabilities uh, and you build those relationships, that's when you're getting the innovation, the collaboration, the, the, the creativity, that out of the box thinking, the ability to say I made a mistake or the ability to say I was wrong. Like those are things that if you don't have that core, I feel safe being who I am. Yep. You're never going to get to those places. So you're never going to be able to take the risks to be able to grow into new things. Um, mm -hmm. And so to mm -hmm. me, I don't think they're in competition, although mm -hmm, there, there is this balance, right? Like people yeah. need to have the emotional intelligence, the self-awareness to see how they impact others. They need to be able to um, read a room uh, yep. and if you if you do it wrong, if you don't have enough emotional intelligence, you know, it could be like somebody loses their top over, you know, some argument and starts yep. yelling or whatever. And like you can't just yell because you're authentically pissed off about something. <laughs> I am like, authentically <laughs> angry. Like, yeah, that's that yeah. might be your authentic experience, but you have to be able to funnel it into a productive or um, professional method of community like it's okay to say hey i notice i'm feeling really frustrated yeah talk about this yeah like i i notice i'm feeling this need to like examine why i'm feeling so frustrated right now let's have a yeah. conversation um and so you definitely you know that's what you and i have done some training with or the the community it sounds true um and we've done ongoing trainings because mm -hmm. that's not natural for everybody mm -hmm. and i'm not gonna say that we have it perfectly solved and like we you know, we have it all, we're 100% there. You know, there's always that room for growth. Nobody is comfortable with confrontation or or uh, conflict for very few people, I should say. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, there is a balance, right? Like there's a professional line. If you're going in to start a team meeting and you're meeting a team for the first time and people are going around with their check-ins and it's just like icebreaker surface, like, hey, we're just starting to get to know each other. And then you jump right in with something like really heavy and like traumatic and like that's not reading the room right like you're right like there's there's a, a high level of emotional intelligence i think in, emotional intelligence involved i think in mm -hmm. like really being able to foster that culture of authenticity yeah so there's that piece of like knowing what's going on with you in the moment knowing what might be going on with the others which you know that good minute and then that check-in gives you a very concrete way to know where people are at and then to, you know, adjust your message from there. So you actually have a, a cadence, a setup to help because I think a lot of us too feel pressure to read the room. We're all on a Zoom unless we <laughs> verbalize what's going on. It will be hard to read the room Unlike if we all walked in the office and you can tell like, yeah, Lindsay had a rough day. I can tell she's, she's moving slower. She's not really, you know, she's struggling. I can see, yeah. we don't get all those insights anymore. So we have to verbalize them and yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think, I mean, that's exactly right. The, the check-in that we do really sets the tone so you can know what's going on. Like we jump to conclusions as humans. I don't know. It's it's a we, yep. we snap judgments left and right. That's what we all do day. as humans all yeah. day long. But if you can like have a moment where you're like, oh, that person isn't mad at me. Their kid is doing this thing yep. like, <laughs> and they're having a hard time. They don't have daycare. They don't have like they're struggling. It's not me. It's not personally directed at me. Um, so I don't know. I I'm a big cheerleader for the check ins for sure. Oh, yeah. When you bring somebody in, when you bring, when you're 
working with new hires. I know we're all talking about the great everything right now. People are leaving. People aren't coming. People want jobs. People don't. When you're bringing people in in this season right now, we've mm -hmm. been doing remote now for two years. What are some of those things you keep in mind as it, you know, as it relates back to authentic communication? What are some things that matter to you when you're onboarding someone to kind of bring them in the fold, even if you're not physically together? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so we definitely try to do onboarding both from the HR side and then from the team side mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then depending on who it might be, it, be, it might be cross teams. Uh, we've set now like new employees. We didn't have to do this when we were in person, but like now, like every quarter, we're like, hey, new employees should meet with the CEO and Brilliant. like hear yep. from our founder and CEO the vision of sounds true. Um, you know, I feel like we're really lucky in that a lot of the folks who seek sounds true out as a place to work are folks who have uh, known about us or who are have a heart heartfelt connection to our mission. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so kind of onboarding. It might actually be the other way around, like it, it might not be like bringing somebody into our vision, it might be like, hey, actually, there's a lot of just normal business stuff that happens here. And yeah. so I want to make sure I'm setting you up so you don't think that we are this utopic society that has it all figured out. Like yeah. we have conflict, we make mistakes, we sometimes don't live up to our core values. And so it's kind of how we deal with those times when there is that friction or that frustration, like how do you deal with that? And so, you know, in our handbook, we have a, a, a bit about how to have like one method of conflict resolution. I actually, when I'm interviewing people, kind of go through some of these things to talk about our culture. Um, and, you know, definitely we want to have people meet as many other people as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have like introductions to, in our all company meeting where people are like, we're like, tell us a little something about you as a human not yeah. necessarily like hey i'm here doing your hr you know it's like mm -hmm. hey i have two cats that you know try to bust <laughs> into all my meetings or whatever it is you know yeah. um whatever hobby or passion uh and so we always are trying to bring that human element in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and however we can and wherever we can we try to take the opportunity to connect people uh and bring them together I mean, that makes a lot of sense when I think about your core mission is to be a messenger and all you're also practicing that. It's it really is. I said this earlier, but it's pretty meta. Your work is meta because it's like you're trying we're creating something out in the world. And we also are gonna do that with each person that we bring in that we have on our team. We're creating that that type of connection too. And huge asterisk. We are not utopia. This is a real company. We have goals that are immeasurable. We're not sitting here levitating just because we write books about spiritual things. We have practical needs, each one of us. And it turns out when you put 130 people together, not everybody has the same viewpoint. <laughs> even Yes. Oh, yeah. this is so important because I, I'm even thinking of like, like very vision driven, mission driven companies, like not for profits even. Yeah. And there's this expectation like, well, if we all love these books, if we're all doing like desire map, then we should be getting along because we're all doing this deep in our work. And yeah, but yet, like, even look at it's so interesting. This is such an interesting topic to me because you can go. It's dangerous. I don't recommend it. But if you went on social media right now and clicked onto an article that you had full agreement with and then clicked into the comments and noticed all the people who are in agreement with the article fighting. They're like, yep. but your perspective is just this much different than mine. So let's, you know, go oh. at it. And so it's to me, this is a challenge with the remote thing, too, right? Because yeah. we're not seeing each other at the water cooler. We're not seeing each other in the break room. We're not having the spontaneous conversations that says, hey, I like you, you like me. We're not out to get each other. Um, yes. And so like, I think as we move into more permanent remote situations, and I think that this is likely the future, right? Like, yes. 
I don't see our community wanting to come all back together in person. You know, there's probably a handful, but yep. uh, this is kind of what we see as, as happening in the world. How do we bridge? <laughs> this would be a question that I'd love answers for from your community. Everybody's Everybody needs to help us in. out here. <laughs> but like, how do we remember mm. that we're human and we're working mm-hmm. with each other and we're, you know, you know, each of us comes from a different size business, but you can't, you can barely put two people together and find like that. Oh yeah, that works perfectly for me. You know, there's no one size fits all solution. Uh, and so it's just constantly like putting, throwing spaghetti on the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah. And that, you know, this idea, I'd love to hear people's thoughts about this. How do we remember that we're human? Uh, if you have a way that you're doing that in your organization, put it in the chat because this is, it, there really is this level of understanding at the end of the day that no two humans probably see the world exactly the same. I mean, yeah, you have whole published books about this idea that no two people see the world exactly the same. Untethered soul. I mean, there's so many books we could talk about where our perception is really creating our reality. And yet, when we are living in more isolation and we only see each other through glass, our perception may be even more just very, um, there might be blinders on the way that we see something. We've got negativity bias built into our brain. So in the silence, we automatically think something's wrong. We're pushing against a lot of our humanity to be able to work remote. And yet here we are doing it. Yeah. It's uh an interesting new world that we're all finding ourselves in. Yes, it is. We've got, I've got a question I was going to ask you here that came up in the chat about this. Um, I'm struggling with individuals in our organization. One scenario is a team player who wants to be a leader that is lacking EQ, emotional intelligence. I'm also dealing with a senior leader that is struggling as a leader due to a lack of emotional intelligence and a lack of empathy. How would we, you suggest we have this conversation with individuals to enhance their growth? and help their teams without being offensive. Trista, what would you do if you had people that you were working with that you know had low EQ that needed development? Yeah, uh, it's a challenge. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, I have 20 years of HR experience. Uh, I have seen this play out and it's, it's, it's a challenge. And I would say, you know, I'm gonna assume the comment is from somebody in HR Mm -hmm. And so uh, my first thought is uh, offer to mediate a conversation, Mm -hmm. right? Like Mm -hmm. as somebody who can like filter through what I'm hearing you say, uh, you know, kind of like that sometimes that mediation piece can really help if you have a neutral Mm -hmm. third party. Yeah. Um, And so that would probably be my first approach. Um, Leadership can be uh, additionally challenged, right? Like, you know, like once you hit a certain level, like, Oh, I'm in, I'm in leadership now. I must have figured this all out. So yeah. it's hard, like if somebody doesn't have the self-awareness to see how they impact. And so some of that is like just the gentle conversation of like, hey, I noticed that when you said X, Y, Z, it made me feel um, disrespected. Do you, are you willing to talk about this? I really need to have us on the same page. Mm-hmm. What do you need in this situation? Mm-hmm. So like that's a a model I tend that's like a go to model for me. Yeah. Like in this situation, here's what I'm feeling. Here's what I need. And this the need part is is interesting because a lot of people can be like, you know, that made me really mad. But then as soon as you ask, well, what do you need in this situation? No clue. I have no idea. So like yes. that need piece is hard. I think for people to recognize. So if they're just offered a moment, like what do you need in this situation? Mm -hmm. Uh, And then always the follow-up is always make sure you know what the other person needs as well. So it's not just one-sided needs. It's like, I'm feeling this. I notice I'm feeling this. I really need, you know, uh, whatever the situation is for this person. Yes. Uh, Would you be willing to X, Y, Z? And what do you need? What do you mm-hmm. need to feel good about this situation? Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of our kind of challenges at Sounds True, you hear the needs word thrown about quite a bit because again, feelings, we usually know what we're feeling. We don't yeah. always know what we need. 
And we'd never like, unless you ask, you don't know what the other person means. That is so good. That's like a, a tweet. We're going to tweet that. We're going to sound like that. But, you know, one thing that you're kind of saying, you've said a few times in, a, in different ways is it's our job to be self-aware. It's yeah. our job to be self-aware to like, oh, this is what I'm feeling. And if I don't tell, Trista, if you're my boss and I don't tell you what I need and we're working remote, there is no way, unless you have a crystal ball over there, I can't tell, but there's no way that you're going to read my mind. Yeah. And that, and just somehow magically know, because we're all living in different circumstances too. For sure. And I think sometimes like when somebody is lacking that self-awareness piece, it is important to share the impact of what they're doing, mm, right? Like yeah. we have that intent versus impact. I don't know how yep. many times I've had a conversation in my personal life and my work life where somebody would be like, oh, what you said, that hurt my feelings. I was like, wow, that was really not what I intended at all. It doesn't matter what I intended, the impact was still hurtful. That's it. Uh, and so like, sometimes we have to share that the impact of a message was different maybe than the intention. And maybe it's, sometimes that conversation is easier had when you give the other person the benefit of the doubt that they weren't trying to hurt you Yes. Maybe they were clueless. Maybe they just didn't have the awareness around what they were saying. So I find conversations can be more successful if you can extend the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. and just be like, maybe that wasn't meant to be malicious, right? Maybe that wasn't meant to be painful, but yeah. the impact of what was said or what was done was painful. Yes. And so let's have a conversation about it. And I get that it's easier said than done. So much easier said than done. But like I promise with practice, this is a great approach. Uh, I use it in my personal life as well as my work life. And it turns out it works. <laughs> yeah, people. A lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. And I think what you said too in the beginning of believing the best, like, I know you're not trying to make me feel awful and you're not trying to be offensive. And this is how this played out on my end. That's really powerful. This is, this was really good. Somebody, um, Lindsay shared back, super helpful asking, what do you need to feel good about this situation? It's a great way to respond to employees without having to pry. That's right. Cause it's like, I don't need to understand all the layers behind this. It may be personal. It may not be my business, but I don't have to pry now. If you just tell me what you need, it also keeps the conversation from turning into a vet, a uh, vent session with no resolution. Yes. A hundred percent. And sometimes what I have found is that people will need some time to kind of like figure out what that need is. Yes. And it's not there because there's, they're busy in the emotional impact of what happened. Yep. And then I'll ask, well, what do you need right now? Yep. And they're like, can we connect tomorrow? Like, <laughs> totally. you know, like I and like let them sit with that. Uh, that yeah. I mean, that happens. I mean, Honestly, like I'm kind of a weird introvert, slow processor over here. Uh, and I often need time to figure out, okay, I, I know something about this situation is impacting me. I need some time to understand what I need around this situation. And it, yes. it's, it's funny because like, I don't know, like a, a lot of my coworkers are so used to hearing me like say, can I get back to you? On that? <laughs> like, I need some time to, to process for myself. Yeah. Uh, so we can't always just assume somebody's just gonna be like, I need this or, you know, whatever. We have That's to like it. be patient with those of us who just process a little bit differently uh, and need to take some time with certain things. Like you can feel that something, something's not quite right in my body. Like you can kind of yeah. feel something almost immediately every time, but sometimes it takes a while to understand what you need and, Sometimes that also, that breathing room lets a situation lose the charge. So you can come definitely. back. Yeah, like come back and if you can have the conversation in an uncharged state. Yes. Uh, that's also often very beneficial. That is so true. How many of us, I mean, this has happened to me where I read an email and I'm like, are you kidding me? And then I'm like, you know what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to sleep on it. I read it the next day. It's almost like a different email, Trista. I'm yeah. thinking there is actually nothing here that's offensive. They literally sent three things that were true. I don't, there was no tone issue, totally. but we're like tired or we've been isolated all day. 
I've noticed when I do feel like I'm on a time crunch that I tend to get short and assume the worst and get frustrated and tense. And so there really is that, what if we left a little more breathing room? If you're coming into the office every day, you'd probably say, I'll chat with them tomorrow. I'm going to give them some space. But there's yep. something about us feeling like our attention needs to always be here and we need to be the time somehow shrunk and we have less time to process. It all has to be reported right away. I think yeah. you're talking about something really important here and the need to take breathing room. I even notice like when you do those minutes, I know we talked about this earlier, but that um, perfect like good minute idea when you just, y'all seriously, it's like ping. And then, I mean, there's been hundreds of people on Zooms with Trista and me, and I'll just ping and we all just mm, get back into our bodies. Like kind of, we kind of lose ourselves in this weird space, this tech space. And it's like, oh, that's right. I'm a human. Oh, I'm breathing. Oh, I can feel my feet again. I can feel my, just taking that space to do that. Totally. Makes a big difference. It sure does. That, and that that's actually something I do miss from in person. Like when we'd mm. have our all company meetings, you know, you put a hundred and some people in a room and like chat, 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 and then the bell goes and just like, okay. Um, and so I'm hoping yep. that that's translating. I think it does translate even through the Zoom. You know, you might not hear that audible uh, quietness come upon yeah. the group, but like I, I personally love starting with that minute, like just get a, give me a moment to get grounded and present. We're like, so how many of us are just back to back all the time? Oh my gosh. You know, we're going from one call to another, from one call to another, like. <sighs> I, absolutely. Breath, and yeah. that's one thing that I think Adam Grant talked about this. Somebody can correct me, but Adam Grant talked about like when we lost the drive to work, we lost some of that breathing room time and just the mental and emotional prep for the day. Oh, I'm putting on my work clothes. I'm driving. Oh, I've got my songs I listen to. I'm doing Lizzo, obviously, in my case. And you're driving and you're kind of psychologically setting yourself up for the day versus I find that when I have to problem solve on tech, like, oh, where's the link with Trista? Oh, where's the record? By the time I get to you, I'm like way up in my head. I'm not in my body at all because I just had to solve all these problems or go hunt this thing on my screen. Totally. Something, I'm telling y'all, I mean, we should have sold those bells today, Trista, for everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we are now a, a the bell good company. minute bell. <laughs> exactly. But really, there's something magical about it. Just 60 seconds to kind of get back in tune. Um, I've got a couple more questions that are coming in to, like anonymously. So I'm going to ask your kind of advice on these, your perspective. Somebody said, are we allowed to be tired of being the only person who has to be self-aware in management? <laughs> I feel like management has been watching for signs of burnout and uh, be there for everyone when there is no support for management. And speaking for myself, my reserves are just about bone dry. Yeah. What do you, what would you say if somebody came to you, a mentee and said, Trista, I am completely toast. I feel like I'm the only one that's being self-aware. <sighs> I don't know what to do anymore. My reserves are two years empty. Yep. It's a struggle because I think all of us are at that place mm. from time to time. Right. I think everybody on this call probably experiences that from mm. time to time and we all have people on our teams and in our organizations that are also experiencing that. Like this is mm -hmm. not a unique um, experience. Mm -hmm. One thing that we try to do at Sounds True is allow for flexibility whenever possible. You know, we tried to, uh, st we started doing that before we went remote. So that was kind of already, there, there's not, with the exception of like a call center where, you know, we say, hey, yes. we're gonna be on the phones from this time to this time. Um, we try to give as much flexibility to our staff as possible. Yeah. You know, some people work four tens. Some people um, take a big long break in the middle of the day to pick up their kid. Some people take a big long break in the day to go for a hike because that's when the weather is good and that's when they yes. can take care of themselves. Um, I do a midday walk every day, usually. Um, yeah. So, like the flexibility to let people stop for a minute or to yes. let people live their life for a minute you know we're not doing the the water cooler talk you know 
now we're like starting our laundry. <laughs> like, exactly. Um, and yeah, that's exactly it. It's hard when you feel like you're the only one that's like holding that self-awareness. Um, you know, I think honestly that people are all trying to do the best they can. Yes. And so like, that's something I kind of try to hold in my heart, even when I'm mad, uh, is that, okay. Every one of us is really trying to do the best we can. And sometimes we're fried. And if somebody on my team who reported to me came to me, I'd be like, do you need some time off? Take some mm -hmm, time off. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. take a break. We do this thing at Sounds True called Wellness Wednesdays, where on every Wednesday we tell, each, uh, tell the company, on work time, take a half an hour, do something that supports your mental health. You know, um, since the pandemic, we occasionally will take um, a full company mental health day, uh, self care day. Yeah. Uh, so we've started implementing things like that on top of personal time or vacation time. Yes. Um, but I think every single one of us feels this way from time to time. And I think knowing that that's kind of our shared experience right now, yeah. while we're trying to navigate a new way forward, um, it's a struggle. And if there if there's any way that your organizations can kind of incorporate some of that flexibility to let people, you know, work a schedule that's maybe unusual mm -hmm. or, or, or something other than the normal, like eight to five grind every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then if you have somebody who's like, this is the schedule I, like I personally am like an eight to five, uh, like I have a set schedule. I, when I leave work for the day, I leave work for the day. That's it's hard to do when we're remote. I don't check Slack. I don't check email. When I am gone for the weekend, when I'm on vacation, I do not engage with work. And I think that all of us working remotely, that's, that's hard. Like people are like, let me just check that email real quick. Let me just check that Slack real quick. Yeah. Uh, and so, f and that works for a lot of people. Like, I don't want to like knock the folks who are like, this is the schedule that works for me. Great. Yeah. That doesn't work for me. I need time away from work yes. to like be a human and to do the things that fill my bucket uh, creatively or um, with my community. I need time to be with my family, um, all of, all of those things. And so for me, that set schedule actually shockingly works. I, maybe I'm just old school. I don't know. <laughs> I, no, that makes sense. You know, when we look at books that study like willpower and productivity and things like that, you know, you always think they're going to tell you how to cram more into each minute. And there's a trend and because research is revealing it that you really do need just as intense as you want to be in terms of productivity. You need just that much intensity towards rest. Yeah. The third way that we function in our culture is distraction. So we're either working deep and we're getting important things done and we're hyper-focused. We are totally relaxed. You're going on a hike, throwing your phone in the river, letting it bounce off a couple boulders and just whew, taking a break. Or this third way, distraction, it's when your brain is like, what are we doing here? It's grasping all the time. Am I, I guess I'm doing a little bit of work. I'm going to check my email real quick. I guess I'm doing a little bit of this. I'm doing a little bit of this and you're, it tires our brains out. Totally. And so this being when it's possible, you're right. Everybody handles energy management differently. And knowing that when I'm off, I really need to give my brain a break from problem solving, from mental fatigue. Yeah. And I would say, like, I'm guessing that some of the people tuning in today are fellow HR folks. Yes. Uh, and we have difficult conversations for a living. For real and life changing conversations. Yeah. And so you have to give yourself a break. You mm -hmm. have to rest. You can't go from difficult conversation to difficult conversation to these 35 emails to um, this presentation to this difficult conversation, like in HR, like your humans are, are your priority. And, yes. you know, we're the ones that are holding this, um, I don't want to call it caretaking, but sometimes it is caretaking. Yeah. Uh, and so I think those of us in the HR really need to kind of model this idea that it's okay to take a break. Yes. How do you know? In your everybody's wired different, but how do you know when you're starting to fizzle, just like fray at the edges? 
you know, somebody said, somebody said in the chat here, I need to practice more of that. I'll respond tomorrow because I get so many complaints, problems, negative feedback are coming at me. I just assume, you know, that I need to take care of it all, or I can kind of feel the pressure to answer in the moment. Yeah. How do you know, maybe in your body or your thought life that it's time to back off and say, I'll answer tomorrow. Yep. Uh, so this has been like a, a lifelong practice for me to get better at. Like I didn't used to be good at this, but now I feel like I'm fantastic at it. <laughs> um, yeah. Like I start getting like this energy where then I'm like, I gotta do all these things. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. And then I immediately lose if I've lost that ability to say that that person is like to, to offer the benefit of the doubt, I'm like, oh, all right, probably time to shut the computer lid, take a walk, take a break, take a breath. For me, it's often eat food. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I yes. Don't, I don't understand. Yeah. There's so many of my coworkers that are like, I haven't had lunch yet. It's three o'clock. And I'm like, I would be dead right now. Um, <laughs> I certainly wouldn't be a kind human being at that moment. <laughs> Yeah, but like understanding the needs, our own physical mm -hmm. needs. I mean, I think as a, as a species in today's society, we are learning to suppress just basic needs. Yeah, water, food, rest. Um, and the more we ignore that, the worse it becomes, the, the, the less likely we're going to be able to create a positive impact on the world. Yeah. And so if you're starting to like, mm. I mean, I'm a serious introvert, so I f just feel everything internally. And so like, there'll be that buzz or that like out of alignment and I'll be like, mm. and I go through my list of needs. Am I, mm. am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Yep. Oh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I need to take a break or come back to this tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, it's, it is interesting too, because, um, I'm an introvert along with you. And I wonder if those that are introverts, if we, or you, you tend that way, I think a lot about that energy and that capacity every day to interact, to be kind, because it doesn't energize me either way. It's me giving. And so I, we definitely, I don't know how other extroverts and introverts think about this, but that's a real thing. I have a limited amount of energy every day. Um, and I want to make sure I was, somebody was telling me when you go to bed at night, you'll only feel refreshed if you have at least 20% of your battery left. So we tend to think like, oh, burn it to the ground, empty my battery and then sleep. But do you know, you know what this is like, maybe as introverts, maybe extroverts too, where you burn so hard that by the time you fall asleep, you're like still in your jeans. And then you, you wake up the next day, you're not refreshed. You're yeah. like half baked, like, whoa, okay. Now I need to like rev myself to get going. I'm gonna say a cheat that I do so I don't hit that. Yes, please. I schedule task time as meetings. Like, Brilliant. so like right before this meeting, uh, there's a placeholder so nobody can book it and I'm not like, <gasps> and then sometimes yeah. after, like if I have a difficult conversation coming, I'll book time afterwards so I can decompress. Yes. Um, so I, my calendar probably looks like I have more meetings than I have. Um, and that's one way that I protect like that 20% of my yes. time. Uh, also, we need time to think. Like if we're oh back to back all, all, the, all day long, we're not thinking about our community, our, our projects, our, like we need time to think as human beings and as leaders across the board. Yes. So Even book that time as a meeting. So it looks exactly. like <laughs> a very important. Meeting. We talk a lot in the coaching world about um, how we value time too much and energy, not enough. And mm -hmm. so doing that on your calendar yeah. reverses it and says, just because I have the time, just because you could in nine minutes, jump off of this and jump into a hard convo, you know, energetically shifting that fast is yep. going to go whoop. It's going to drop your battery even more. Yeah. And you're Don't not going to do a good job in the next thing. You're still so, here. You're still, yeah. you're like, oh, I'm trying to transition. And so that's really interesting. Managing our energy by blocking our time, being generous with the, the think time we give ourselves, the recovery time, especially when you are in HR or leadership role, you're having hard conversations. It's a, it's a lot on your system to, yeah. to have those over and over again. That makes a lot of sense. 
That said, every HR person on this call knows that sometimes that time gets stomped because you have an emergency. Of course. And then you take it. So it's not like you're completely like, oh, nope, this is block nope. time. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like you're you you've created a reserve so that yeah. when somebody says, Can I have that time? you can say, Absolutely, I've taken care of myself up to this moment. So I can push, I can give that time away. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. This energy uh, attention management, this time management, they all fold together. And in a new way, we have to build this out for ourselves. Mm -hmm. 100%. I, this is such an enlightening conversation. And I know so many people found camaraderie in this, in this just process, in this conversation we had on the porch. I'm just curious as we're, um, kind of wrapping our combo together this afternoon. Obviously you work for an organization that is changing the world, is raising the consciousness of the world, is creating opportunities for us to self-reflect. What's something that you think in this season as leaders, as those, so some of us are in HR, what's a message that you think we might be missing for ourselves? What's something you would want to tell the world from your own life experience? I know I'm putting you on the mm. spot here. No, it's okay. Um, man, wouldn't it be amazing if we could all just ex extend each other a little grace, mm -hmm. a little kindness, try to find that shared perspective uh, or common ground, I should say. Um, especially in this remote world now, we need to be able to connect to each other as humans. Mm -hmm. um, so grace and kindness, that would be that would be probably my message and hope for the world. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And and you showed us today several ways that we can create space to do that, whether it's the good minute, whether it's giving ourselves space on each side, seeing check-ins as part of the connection process, not as a thing we gotta get through so we can get the work done. <laughs> You offered so many different moments and perspectives. I know that's been really helpful for us today on the porch. Trista, thank you for being here with us. It means the world to me. I'm so glad we got to do this together. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed having the conversation with you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. I, I had a blast. Of course, yes. Thank you everybody for being here. We will see you soon on the porch, Trista appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here and helping us all think a little differently about how to take care of each other. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon. <laughs>